How's it going, Savage Life family? I'm going to be giving you guys a crypto news update to see what is going on with Bitcoin and the overall market across the board. And we're going to first go ahead and start by saying look at Bitcoin's dominance at 46.9%. Before I made this video earlier in the morning, it was sitting at 47.1% in terms of dominance. So it seems Bitcoin is receiving huge market share and its market cap just keeps increasing week by week. But all in all, there is a couple of things to look forward to and you guys have to not be too antsy as of yet as I am expecting a small correction before another rally back up. That small correction will probably put back Bitcoin back in the lower $60,000 price points because we are being extremely greedy. The fear and greed index is showing extreme greed. We are at 78, jumping from a 71 greed of last week. And if we pay attention to the market cap of the overall cryptocurrency market, we can see it sitting at $2.4 trillion. When last week it was sitting comfortably at $2.1.2 trillion. So that's $250 billion poured into the market in just a single week, ladies and gentlemen. And a lot of people are becoming extremely greedy. So we're due for some profit taking off the table. But is this the end of the bull run rally? Is this the end of the bull run cycle? Absolutely not. As November's and December's are known to be quite explosive. So you're definitely not going to want to miss out on these rallies. For an example here, let me show you the last November of 2020, where we went ahead and rallied from November 2nd all the way till the 6th of January here. And if I show that in terms of percentage, that is a 203% rally. And keep in mind, last year wasn't even a having cycle. This year is a having cycle, which makes the rallies much more explosive and something to look forward to. So let's go ahead and hop into some first initial news and it is us officially the top destination for bitcoin miners beating out china for the first time now cambridge which is a well-known university found that china's average monthly share of the global hash rate in july zeroed out obviously due to the fact that they have banned all mining all trading activity out of china kicking these miners out to go to other places which is a major reversal from september 2020 when china captured about 67 percent of the market share as of july 35.4 percent of bitcoin's hash rate and industrial term used to describe the collective computing power of miners is in the united states why is this important because all in all the united states has their head on their shoulders and we are not going to be banning miners out of the united states why is that because united states have other ideas in mind and those ideas come with taxation and regulation now why kick out the miners when they are such a cash cow is better to lower the electricity bill to attract much more miners and once we grab them Put a small taxation that way we are able to get some passive income out of the miners that way so all in all is beneficial for both the miners and both the united states of america and it's definitely a loss for china but as you can see they do deserve it due to the fact that they have been messing with our portfolios if you were invested in the cryptocurrency industry since april now next we have coinbase opening an nft marketplace coinbase has opened a waitlist for a marketplace that lets users mint collect and trade non-fungible tokens and the nft market has boomed this year with sales volume topping 10 billion in the third quarter it seems like nfts are becoming quite popular and i still feel like it is extremely early for nfts a lot of individuals do see it as a bubble but i do see it as a as a sign for something to come everything in this day and age is becoming digital and just because you see it as digital and not physical and something you can't touch you claim it to be unreal valueless and not worth the investment but the same individuals were saying that about bitcoin back in 2009 2010 when it was sitting at a dollar 10 cents 50 cents but look at it now at 60 thousand dollars so just don't miss out on the future and all in all don't judge a book by its cover 
Now, NFTs are one of a kind digital assets designed to represent ownership of online items like rare art, for an example. They aren't fungible, meaning you can't exchange one NFT for another like you could with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Each NFT is unique and it has its own unique strain of code to let you know where it came from, the first minted transaction and every transaction after that so you can follow and see who the owner is of that mint. Next, we have Tether. Now, this is quite concerning for those of you who don't truly understand what Tether is, but I'm going to go ahead and break it down to you in the simplest way as possible. Now, Tether is what's known as a stable coin. These are digital currencies that are tied to real world assets. The US dollar, for an example, it could be the peso, the Mexican dollar, but majority is euros and the US dollar. Now, in May, Tether broke down the reserves for its stable coin. And the firm revealed that only a fraction of its holdings, which is 2.9% to be exact, were in cash while the vast majority was in commercial paper and investments like cryptocurrency holdings commercial paper is not usually backed by any form of collateral making it a form of unsecured debt who uses these commercial papers we have big banks like jp morgan wells fargo bank of america td america or i mean td <laughs> but the state's top law enforcement official accused the firms of moving hundreds of millions of dollars to cover up 850 million dollars of losses now tether and bitfinex agreed to pay 18.5 million in settlement and were barred from operating in, in new york however the companies didn't admit to doing anything wrong now this could mean two things either they wanted regulators and law enforcement off their backs so they just paid the amount to shut them up or they wanted officials to stop digging further and pay them to keep quiet. Either way, it's definitely not a good look for anyone in that sense. And it's currently the only thing keeping me concerned as Tether has $60 billion in its market share. So long story short, if everybody at this very moment wanted to withdraw their Tether, they couldn't as only 3% is pegged by the dollar. But then again, could you imagine if everyone at JP Morgan or Wells Fargo or any bank for that case tried to withdraw all their money at once? It wouldn't be possible as these banks only hold 10% in reserve. So in short, Tether is copying banks and law enforcement officials and regulators oppose this. Ironic, isn't it? Now, next we have Bitcoin here, and this was an article released by an interview of Dan Moorhead, who is the CEO of Pantera Capital. And they stated that Bitcoin's market tendency to crash by over 80% after logging strong bull runs might come to an end. Now, where have we seen this 80% from its all time high here on April 14th? We're going to go ahead and graph this and see the low on July 20th when Bitcoin was at that $29,000 mark. We saw a drop from $64,000 to $29,000. Yes, it was at 80%, but it was a 54% decline. So what ends up happening after a massive bull run, Bitcoin does tend to fall down and release a majority of its gain. And a lot of FUD is released as well as panic sellers. Traders get liquidated, which drop Bitcoin further and further down. Now, this is not the first time this has happened and it's definitely not the last. For an example, if we look at the past rally here in 2017, when it rallied from October all the way till December, we saw a correction of 80% here from the 17th of December to the 18th of February. Typically, this article is stating that the market is becoming broader, more valuable, and, and more institutional. The amplitude of price swings will moderate. Will moderate. But I still want to show you guys to take into consideration that these drops are normal and it's definitely not a bad idea to follow historical trends and collect some profits near December, January due to the market historically correcting time and time again. That doesn't mean you have to. 
but it just goes to show corrections are inevitable whether or not it's going to be 80 percent there's still going to be a correction after a massive rally so do keep that in mind and expect that when you are an investor and of course don't panic out of your position especially if you are in bitcoin ethereum ethereum classic litecoin the top coins that have been around for a long time due to the fact that historical trends happen from human emotions. Humans control the price fluctuations of these coins due to demand and supply. And demand and supply is driven overall by emotions and historical trends of charts. So if you guys enjoyed this video, a quick little update, smash that like as it helps with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.